Hi, my name is Maya, and this is how wind tunnels work. There are two types of wind tunnels, recirculating and non-recirculating. Flyspot is an example of a recirculating tunnel. Now let's see what it looks like on the inside. This is the engine control room. There are four frequency drivers, one for each engine. Now we're entering the engine room. I love being in here because I feel like I'm in some kind of futuristic reactor. <laughs> This wind tunnel happens to have four turbines, but there are many different configurations. You can have one big one or even 16 really small ones. The first step on the wind's path is to be pushed down by the turbine all the way from here down into the basement. So this is the basement. <laughs> Basically, as the wind is recirculating, it has to be pushed down quite a while, I think it's around 15 meters, into this giant hole underground, which is where we're going now. Beautiful. <laughs> so kids, this is what happens if you don't tie your shoelaces. They end up in the, the pit of nothing. Yeah, this looks like a Star Wars scene, like a, yeah, right? it just went it into... Really crazy. Especially like because of that little light coming out from the top. <laughs> it looks kind of like a, a spaceship launch site or something like that. As we follow the path of the wind down from the engines, the, it gets pushed down sideways and then goes all the way to this side, which then again is redirected by the turning vanes and then pushed upwards towards the flight chamber. Funnily enough, when the tunnel is on, you can actually stand here with no issues. It's a little bit windy, but it's not as strong as in the flight chamber. <laughs> Damn, this looks like a two-man show. <laughs> <laughs> so here I'm exiting the matrix, and I will see you on the other side. As you can see here, I'm sitting on the bottom turning vanes, which turn the air from sideways up, and up there, there we have the flight chamber. The air is compressed all the way from this large space down to 14 feet, and this compression creates the speed that lets you float. And now we're in the flight chamber. So as you can see, the air is now compressed into this little small area, which means that we can fly at the speed that we expect to fly at. Um, after the glass ends, you can see the tunnel gets a little bit larger, and as soon as that happens, the pressure drops again, and so the speed drop, drops again. Okay, no, the pressure does not drop. Apparently the pressure is higher there. I don't know why the speed is... I'm not a scientist. So I asked a scientist, and this is why. Anyways, there's about 15 meters from the net all the way up. And if you look all the way up there, that there's more turning vanes that turn the air through the top and then back into the engines. Danger. So yeah, I like this place. It just seems so huge. Like look all the way up there, there's still stuff going on. But anyways, this is the outside of the diffuser. So we were just a little bit lower than we are now. We can go all the way up. <laughs> It's a good workout to go up there. We should stick something in this window, like a photo of like a penis or something. Easter egg. There's a little window to the to the tunnel. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> so here we have two things. For one, we have the pigeon safety net so that pigeons don't fly in the tunnel. And for the second thing, we have that big um, block over there of concrete and that is just made to dampen the sound. This machine is really loud, uh, so when these doors are open, these uh, concrete blocks help to dampen the sound and keep it quiet from the outside. Ta-da! Follow me. You should only step on these stripes. 
here we are at the very tippity top of the tunnel. Um, this is the same thing as the basement, basically just the turning point for the wind. It goes up from that side through the turning vanes, goes all the way in this direction, and then down into the engines. So the engines are under these turning vanes. It's pretty cool in here. These doors also open for ventilation purposes. In case the tunnel is a little bit too hot, then we will open these as well as the roof, and then new air comes in and then old air gets pushed out. So check it out, we're sitting all the way on top of the tunnel on the top turning vanes, and it's a huge drop all the way down. And when the turning vanes are a little bit open like this, you could actually fly out of the tunnel and come out from this hole and just climb down in here. <laughs> have you done it? I haven't climbed out, but I have. I'll, I'll, put, put, I'll put a video up here um, so you can check it out. But you can like pop up here and just hang from the turning vanes. And all the way up here, there's basically no more wind. You have to really like launch yourself from the bottom all the way from the net to the top and grab on and hang. And it <laughs> feels really wild because you're really high up. And there's also one of my favorite points in the tunnel, which is the roof. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe I'll slip on the... And now we enter the roof. It's raining. <laughs> This tunnel happens to have options to open the circulation of the wind to the outside. As you can see here, this is where the wind escapes if you open the tunnel. This is usually for AC purposes because this is Poland. We don't have a normal type AC. Um, we don't really need it <laughs> unless it's really, really hot, but then it just stays hot. And other than that, the air here is taken out and then cooled down through the air outside. Test. <laughs> you can also say that helmet flies away that fly out. <laughs> if your helmet flies away during a flight, it tends to come out through these holes and onto the roof. <laughs> Wind speed is controlled by the driver who sits here. This is the power wheel. I don't know. Knob. <laughs> power knob. <laughs> the what? Potsometer. Potsometer. Potsometer? <laughs> Potsometer? So you just spin this and the speed goes up and down. Basically the way that we do it is uh, we go through percentages. So for example, if I'm in the tunnel and I want to fly at 70%, then I show the driver that I want 70% through a few different uh, hand signals. Different countries have different ways of showing wind speeds. But for us, we have the big numbers going this direction. Uh, and okay, it's kind of hard to explain actually. <laughs> It's a little bit easier for me to show you a photo, so this is what we do to show our speeds.
for watching. That is about all I could think of to show you guys. Uh, disclaimer, I'm not an engineer and I don't build wind tunnels. So um, if you think I said anything wrong, just let me know in the comments. Um, and yeah, like and subscribe, I guess. <laughs>